Well, praise the Lord, welcome to day four of the Morris Cirillo Revelation Faith School of Ministry. God is raising the level of our faith, and I can't wait, we're gonna get right into the incredible message today. Let every struggle to produce faith cease. What an awesome word we're about to receive. Go ahead and use the share button. Go ahead and invite somebody to join you today. We welcome you on the podcast, on Facebook, on YouTube. If you're ready, shout, I am ready. And let's welcome once again, God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. Matthew 13, 32. Matthew 13, 32. Or the 31st verse, let's start there. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, <laughs> which a man took and sowed in his field. Now listen to this. Somebody say the devil's alive. The devil's alive. Somebody say it like you mean it. Which indeed is the least of all seeds. When are we going to stop walking around here giving so much credit to the devil and thinking about such a great big power that you and I have to overcome? He's a nothing and the least in the kingdom of God tears down every power that he possesses. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Let me tell you what the least in the kingdom under the anointing grows up to be. indeed is the least of all seeds but when it is grown it is the greatest when you mature brother when you get the nipple bottle out when you become an heir oh glory be to God when you get full grown when you're ready to take your inheritance when it is grown it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. If you have the faith of a grain And the 40th, or the 30th, and the 31st verse. Let's go to the 35th verse. Mark 4, 35. The same day when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over on the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so it was now full. And when he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, they awake him and said to him, Master, carest thou not if we perish? And he arose, he rebuked the wind, he said to the sea, Peace, be still. 
There was a great calm. The wind ceased. And then he turned to his disciples and he said to them, Why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no faith. And shall not doubt in his heart. Turn back with me to the book of Matthew if you're following me. The 14th chapter. Another situation under the same type of circumstances. 23rd verse. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. When the even was come, he was alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Jesus went to them, walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him, they were troubled. Jesus said, be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's really you, bid me to come. And he said to Peter, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. When he got his eyes on his circumstances, and he took his eyes off of Jesus, I want to just interject this here because these are all things we're going to get to. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to stop seeking healing and start seeking the healer. You can't come into the relationship of supernaturalism that we are talking about, that it is absolutely necessary for you to experience before the impossible can be made possible in our lives through the promises of God as long as you concentrate on the objects. You have no idea of what one glimpse of the healer will do for you today. You have no idea if you'd forget your cancer and if you'd forget your sugar diabetes and if you'd forget all this arthritis business in your body and if your heart was so filled with Romans 12, 1 and 2. Oh, Watch out for the measure of faith will be given unto you to rise up and the assurance will come once you catch the glimpse of the healer. The healing will be manifested. The ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. The wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking 
on the sea. They became afraid because they thought it was a spirit. He said, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Peter said, if it's really you, Lord, bid me come. He said, come. He started to walk on the water. Got his eyes on his circumstances. Fell. He was afraid. He began to drown. And Jesus stretched forth his hand, the 31st verse, and caught him. And he said to Peter, can you imagine Jesus holding him by the hand and lifting him up out of that water? He said to him, oh, thou of little faith. Wherefore didst thou secret again is the absence of doubt. Shall not doubt in his heart. Let's go to Mark. 1614. Mark 1614. Jesus had died on the cross. Jesus had been buried in the grave. Jesus was arrest, was resurrected. He had already appeared to Mary. It already appeared to his disciples. The word went out. Jesus is alive. He is resurrected. The grave cannot hold him, has not hold him, held him. But he is alive. But in the heart of those disciples that had heard the message was unbelief. Every time the women came and said, he is a risen, they said, we don't believe it. Every time somebody who saw Jesus and walked with him and talked with him, brought the message and said, he's alive, they said, we don't believe it. If you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, Jesus, in his resurrected body comes into the room where the 11 apostles are sitting at me. Every one of them, not just Thomas, but every one of them, ranked, jellyfish, backboneless, spineless, good for nothing, unbelievers. Say, you shouldn't be so hard on them. I'm not hard on them. They did it to themselves. They ran from the cross. They denied him. Somebody said, there goes Peter. You're one of them. He said, no, 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 I've never known him. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, Mark 16, 14, as they sat at meat, and he upbraided them with their unbelief. He rebuked them because of their Would 
you get the mask off with Brother Swiddle for just one moment? These are people who walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus, saw him perform his miracles, open the eyes of the blind, unstop the ears of the deaf, raise the dead, calm the winds and the waves, and still they did not believe. out the devils when they couldn't keep their eye on the master when they fell and when they didn't believe and when they ran I know it looked hopeless but will you put this in your spirit today for here's where we make the great spiritual transition from that stupid illustration excuse my word stupid but it's in the Bible from that ignorant illustration of spiritless men who would have us to believe that faith is a natural life force and you sit on the chair, you manifest faith. You turn the light switch on and you manifest faith. You lay down on your bed and you just have faith. Your bed's gonna hold you up or you wouldn't lay down on it. Here's where we make the transition of all transitions from the natural world into the spirit world. For faith is not a natural life force. Man has five natural senses. We touch. We taste. We see. We hear. We smell. Those are five natural senses given to us by God. But man does not reach God with his natural senses. I'm almost thinking we're going to need another four or five days here. No, just hold steady. If I have to preach all day or teach all day, we'll get through it, believe me. But it is written, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you don't understand what that means. You think that it's hearing the word or the scripture standing upon that word. That's why a lot of people are saying things and nothing is happening. It's not saying the words that are important. It's the ability of speaking the words in faith that's important. If the word is not mixed with faith, it is a tinkling sound and a symbol and like an empty hollow drum. You pray, you plead, you scream, you holler, you shout, but nothing happens. You don't reach God. 
God with these natural senses. You can't see him with your natural eye. You can't hear him with your natural ear. You can't touch him with your natural hand. You can't taste him with your natural taste buds. You can't smell him with your natural sense of smell. But once a supernatural experience happens to you, then you see no longer with human eyes, but you see with eyes that show you nothing is impossible to him that believeth. You hear with ears that speak to you, that tell you faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. You taste with a supernatural hunger and thirst. You smell with the connection of a new beautiful fragrance that you have not been aware of before. The aroma of the spirit of the power of the living God that indulges you. intended for you to go out under your own anointing. God never intended for you to go out under your own power. God never intended for you to go out under your own capabilities. He intended for you to move, to live, to operate under the same power. All power is given unto me, both in heaven and in earth. And as my Father sent me, even so send I you. He intended for you and I to operate under the same power, the same authority the same anointing and the same manifestation of faith that Jesus had. Strange, strange how in the next few words, Jesus is looking at that group of unbelieving back boneless jellyfish good for nothing faithless people and he says to them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature this group you tell me how they meet the standard they don't have any degrees. Amen. They're not polished. Amen. They can't even meet the criteria of the example of the life of Jesus. How are they gonna go and preach the gospel? I like to always use that little illustration where I see Peter standing around or sitting around the table. You probably heard Brother Swilla mention it before. I just quickly mention it again where Peter jumps up and he runs from that table and he starts to go ahead and for the door and Jesus says to him, Peter, where are you going? He says, well, Lord, you just told me, go preach. Because that's what he said in the next word after he rebuked them. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So here goes Peter, that old impetuous man, running down the street. Jesus grabs him by the back of the neck and he says, get back here. And he shoves him down in that chair. He says, sit down. Barrest him half to death before the other ten apostles. Why can't I go? 
Jesus said to him, Peter, what makes you think you're ready? He said, oh, I saw you. I saw you heal the sick. I look at you. You're resurrected. He said, yes. He said, and you also denied me. You also didn't have the courage and didn't have the faith. Now he said, Peter, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not letting you go and I'm not letting you preach until something happens to you. He says, I want you to get to Jerusalem like I got to the River Jordan, like the Holy Ghost came on me. You get to Jerusalem because there's something coming. I'm going to send it when I get It is given unto man to every man a measure of faith. I beseech you said Paul by the mercies of God present yourself yield yourself surrender yourself seek the healer die to sell lay it all on the altar And in that measure that you do, it's going to be measured to you. God's not going to entrust you. If you want to stay a baby, he'll let you stay a baby. If you want to suck nipples, he'll let you suck nipples. If you want to suck milk, he'll let you suck milk. He's not going to give you any more than what you are willing to dedicate and humble and present yourself before him to receive not one ounce more. Don't you fool yourself. They were up there, brother, seeking God. I bet they had a lot of time to repent. I bet they had a lot of time to say, God, we're so sorry we ran from the cross. I bet Peter had a lot of time to say, Lord, I wish I never did deny you. I bet they had a lot of time to make things right between themselves and God. Please don't struggle. Stay long enough in the presence of the healer so that he can do his work in your life. Will you tell Brother Cyril if you cannot create joy, if you cannot create love, if you cannot create peace, please, church, tell me how can you create Hallelujah. What makes 
us think. We can go to the scriptures, conjure, manufacture, work up. I pray in this seminar, you pass over this line. I pray. I pray for you. These are not natural life forces. Faith is not a natural life force. Faith is a super natural <coughs> sense. We have five natural senses. We touch, we taste, we see, we hear, we smell. Natural senses. We don't reach God with those natural senses. God is supernatural. So what has he done? Paul tells us he's given us something better. A new sense. A sixth sense. A sixth sense. A sixth sense. You get that? Deep in your spirit. A sixth sense. That ability to count it as a fact. What you don't see with your eyes. But you know it by faith. How? What we don't understand, but it's very true. Man is not saved by faith. I know this is strong meat. You've had a lot to digest. How can you be saved by something you do not possess? Remember we said faith is not a natural life force. It's not this garbage that people have been telling us about. That we sit on a chair or we lay on the bed. We're demonstrating faith. Or we go to flip a little light switch on and we're demonstrating faith. I hope you never get involved in that garbage again. You say, Brother Sula, what about Romans? <clears throat> Not Romans, Ephesians. Somebody give me the scripture. 2, 8, and 9. 2, 8, 9. By grace are you saved? Through faith. Oh, what about that, Brother Sula? Let, let, me, let me draw you a little picture before I go back to that scripture verse. It is written that man is created in the image of God. Now look at Mars. Where is the image of God? You think I look like God? 
You think I have God's eyes? You think I have his cheekbones? Do you? You think I look like God? But Mars doesn't look like God in my physical features. Yet we're created in the image of God. Where is the image of God? It's not in our physical features at all. It's in our spirit. He made us like himself. You know what else he did? He gave us a characteristic of himself. You know what it is? It's our free moral will. You've heard me say to you over and over and over again in this conference, how far do you want to go? It's up to you. Why? Because God's given to you his image. It's in your spirit. It's his will. That's why Romans 12, 1 and 2 is so important to the measure of faith. We lay that will down. Adam took that will. He used it just like the devil did. See, angels have the same characteristic. They don't have to obey God. Maybe you didn't understand that, but that's true. See, how do you know? Because Lucifer was an angel and he became Satan. Demons and principalities and powers were all angelic beings and they became followers of the devil. They had a choice. And so do we. We have a choice. It's up to us. What do we want? How much of God do we want? How far do we want to go? How much of our life do we want to give him? God didn't have any strings on Adam. He was no puppet. Didn't say raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your arm. His relationship with him was based on voluntary expression. Adam loved God because he wanted to. He served God because he wanted to. That's why I tell people, don't you come around here and tell me. Now, please don't get mad at me. Look up on me. Look up here. Don't you come around here and tell me the devil made you do that. All the devil can do is tempt you. He can't make you do anything. It's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. You want to yield? Help yourself. You want to resist? Help yourself. There is no temptation. There is no trial. There is no persecution that the enemy can bring into my life that can defeat me. How does salvation work, brothers? Do you understand what the plan of salvation is? Look up here. You know what the plan of salvation is? God is after one thing in your life. He's after one thing. And even after we get to the place where we yield to him for salvation. Sometimes it's even hard for us to go on and yield a little bit further for other areas of our life. You know what he's after? One thing, that which Adam used against him in the garden, his will. He's after your will. He's after my will.
in every area of my life, he's after my will. He wants my will. He wants my will. He wants the complete surrender, the total surrender of all that I am and all that I hope to be. God wants it because it belongs to him. What happens when we get saved? The Spirit of God comes to us. He convicts us. He challenges us to give our life to Jesus. If you'll be honest with Morris tonight, you will probably tell me the truth that 90% of us, when we got saved, really didn't know what it was all about. But the Spirit of God somehow got inside us. No man cometh unto the Father except the Spirit of God draws him. Somehow the Spirit of God got inside of us and it drew us to God. And what did we do? We had a choice. The choice was this, surrender our will to God and say, Lord, I don't understand what it's all about, but be merciful to me, forgive me, cleanse my sins. Lord Jesus, I don't know how anything can happen, but come into my heart. You had a choice, or you had the choice to turn your back on him and walk away and be stubborn. That's all you have the power to do. You don't have faith. Man is not born with faith. Faith is not a natural life force. There's not a person in the world that has the ability to comprehend God. God is supernatural. That's why the world stumbles as they try to find him, as they try to dissect him, as they try to analyze him, as they try to put him in some kind of a religious methodology that they can accept. There is no way. Their efforts are vain. Their efforts are vain. Talk to the philosophers and see. Talk to the intelligentsia and see. They grope in darkness. Now let's read that scripture again, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Listen to it. By grace are you saved through faith, don't stop, but not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Do you think God sent his son Jesus here to die on the cross? To shed his blood so that by some power that man possesses in himself, he can find salvation? No, it's not of work. It's not of man. Salvation and grace are the gifts of God. Amen. 
you say, Brother Thriller, what happens? I'll tell you what happens. We come to him. We don't know. Don't try to figure it out. Put your mind on the altar. Put it on the altar. We can only get all the intelligent people in the world to just flush out their mind. Yes. Get it out. Don't try to figure it out. But come to him. Do the only thing that you can do. And that is yield yourself. Surrender your will. And at that moment, when a person surrenders their will to God, tell me if this isn't what happened to you. At that moment, when you surrendered, you gave your life, and you came off the throne of your heart, and you gave your life to Jesus Christ. At that moment, what happened to you? All of a sudden, you got up from where you were praying. You didn't understand it. But you was different. You said something happened to me. I don't know what it was, but my God, I'm different. I've got joy. I've got peace. I, you went around starting to hug everybody. You wanted to hug everybody. <laughs> All of a sudden, you felt a relationship with God that you didn't have before. What happened? What happened? By grace, you were saved through faith, not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God. When you yielded, when you surrendered, when you abdicated the throne of your heart and you got your will off of it and you surrendered it up to God, had that moment, brother, God dropped into you the measure of faith. Oh, glory be to God. The measure for salvation. Well, somebody just go ahead and lift your hands in the presence of the author and the finisher of our faith. Brother Cirillo is taking us into an incredible revelation. Honey, I'm so glad that you're here today. Apostle Fernando Garay in the house today. We're standing on the incredible grounds of the Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center. And honey, today, Brother Cirillo is reminding us that faith is not the product of man, but that God is wanting to take the pressure off of us and remind us that we can't produce faith, that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And thank God that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Amen, amen. This really is a deep revelation, a journey that Dr. Cirillo is taking us on. And I like what you said, honey, about the struggle, uh, stopping the struggle. I remember when I first heard this message and I really struggled to get faith. I thought it depended on me. And uh, every day I would, I would declare the Word of God over my life. And if I ever missed a day, I would think, oh no, it's not gonna happen now because, <laughs> because I missed a day. But I've come to realize through this great teaching from Dr. Cirillo that God is not depending on me and God is not depending on you to produce the faith. We cannot produce the faith. We don't have the ability to bring the promises of God uh, into our life. And it really comes in a, in a deeper way. And it is that great spiritual transition, that great spiritual transition where we go from little faith uh, to that full assurance of faith. And I love what Dr. Cirillo says. He says, uh, a lot of people are saying things and nothing is happening. They're begging, they're pleading with God. They're like I was, just daily repeating the Word of God. But it's really the ability 
of speaking the words in faith that is important is what Dr. Cirello says. If the word is not mixed with faith, it is a tinkling sound and a cymbal. It's like a hollow drum. And so that really kind of exposes a lot of things that maybe we are struggling for in our own life to produce that faith. But really, Romans 12 tells us that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. But And it's that being transformed by the renewing of our mind and that great spiritual transition that Dr. Cirillo talks about, that, that journey that we are on to have an experience, just like the disciples did, where they went from no faith, little faith, into having a great faith. And uh, God is taking each one of us, God is taking you on a journey where He's not depending upon anything that you possess, but faith is not a natural life force. Dr. Cirillo teaches us it's a supernatural life force, and uh, it's not something that we create, but we surrender our will to God, and He comes in and takes us on that great spiritual transition. You know, Fernando, I can hear Brother Cirillo's voice. So many times we would talk about God is raising the level of your faith. And I love that so much, Fernando. There is an impartation that our viewers, our listeners are receiving as we connect with this Revelation Faith School of Ministry. There's an impartation of faith that is being released. I believe that 100%. Right now, my heart is like thumping, boom, boom, boom. That there's such a strong presence of God as, as we continue to learn about the faith, you know, and, and like, the Lord took Peter from one level to another level. Here goes Peter. Jesus is walking on water. He gets out of the boat to walk on water. He does something he had never done before. Was he out of his mind? Yes. He was out of his natural mind. He went into the supernatural mind of God. He started walking by faith on water. Unfortunately, he took his eyes off Jesus, started looking at the circumstances. But that's what's happening to us, I believe. We're just going from one dimension to a higher dimension to a higher dimension. Praise God. You know, honey, Fernando, I can't wait tomorrow. What a powerful revelation that Brother Srillo is going to continue. I just want to so encourage you to stay connected. Faith cometh, the Bible says, by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Morris Cirillo is not just a man that is preaching off the top of his head, but he is preaching from an incredible experience of God's faith, God's power at work in his life. And he is a gift to the body of Christ. Ephesians says apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, they are to equip us for the works of the ministry. And I want to encourage you as we go off today, if you haven't gotten a copy of Brother Cirillo's textbook for this entire Revelation Faith School of Ministry, God's Faith. Somebody say God's Faith. I want you to know. God isn't saying Greg's faith or Jerry's faith or Fernando's faith. Jesus said, have the faith of God. Faith is an incredible gift. And this is a shift. This is a teaching that maybe you have never heard before. We hear about all the ways that we can produce faith. But Brother Trillo is taking us into this revelation that it's God's faith, a supernatural life source. So I want to encourage you to take advantage of the uh, resources. I cannot wait until we reconnect tomorrow. I want to encourage you, check your emails, review your study notes, watch the messages again and again and again. In just a few days, we're going to be taking you into your end of course certificate of completion quiz, where you will have an opportunity to join now tens of thousands of students from over 174 nations that are participating in this incredible experience. This is a school with a difference. And so, Father, we thank you today. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Lord, for every student, Lord, that is connecting today. And Lord, we thank you that you said that this is our victory, even our faith. And God, we join our faith with our brother today. 
we join our faith with our sister today. And God, we speak to every mountain. God, we speak to every circumstance in their family, in their finances. God, even in their ministry right now. And we declare that you are not what the devil says you are, but you are what God says you are. And today you are stepping in to a new level of the faith, the power and the victory of God. Well, on behalf of my beautiful wife, Jerry, on behalf of Fernando, our incredible chairwoman, Teresa Cirillo, our president, David Cirillo, this is Greg Morrow declaring from the grounds of the Morris Cirillo Legacy International Center, you are a part of God's end time plan and God has not changed his mind concerning you. God has not planned any defeats for you, only faith and victory. We'll see you tomorrow live from Legacy for the incredible continuation of this Revelation Faith School of Ministry in Jesus' name.